<clears throat> YouTube, YouTube, what a YouTube down home news TV. I am Dre. We got a video coming from Sky News Australia, the land down under, mate. I have a horrible Australian accent. I'm sorry, people. It's late in the evening. I'm a little tired. Please forgive me for my lack of my lack of uh, comment, comedic voiceovers, but um, the title of this video is Repti's Losing It. Rita Panahai hits out at disturbing or disgusting slur from The View. I'm dyslexic, God, I, I admit it. Or I can't read one of two. Like I said, it's late in the evening. You can see it's pretty dark. I need to get better lighting in here, but uh, yeah, I've seen a portion of the view about what Miss Panahai is speaking about. But uh, let's just check it out together. Let's check it out. Now it's time for Lefties Losing It. Let's start Lefties with the ladies of the view finding new lows. Just when you think this lot have hit rock bottom, they start to dig. Listen to this disgusting slur from race baiter Sonny Huston against a wife and mother, Brittany Mahomes, the wife of arguably the NFL's best player, Patrick Mahomes. She's now being accused of not caring enough for her interracial family because she liked a Trump post on Instagram. That this swift effect uh, will speak to more women about the true character of Donald Trump and, and, and will turn them away. But to your initial point, I know you said we weren't going to talk about it, but I was. Um, it just seems to me that since she is in an interracial marriage, um, she should have known that to support a race is problematic. Um, her children are, are biracial. These people are demented with hate. Now, let's check in with the woman they see as their saviour. Kamala Harris was with Oprah for a loving the softest of softball interviews you'll ever see, and she still managed to screw it up. I promise to inflict only one minute of this calamity on you, and watch this carefully. You can see Oprah dying inside as she listens to his incoherent gobbledygook. It's... It's kind of beautiful, actually. Americans, by character, are people who have dreams and ambitions and aspirations. We believe in what is possible. We believe in what can be. And we believe in fighting for that. That's how, that's how we came into being, because the people before us understood that one of the greatest expressions for the love of our country, one of the greatest expressions of patriotism is to fight for the ideals of who we are, which includes freedom to make decisions about your own body, freedom to be safe from gun violence, freedom to have access to the ballot box, freedom to be who you are and just be, to love who you love openly and with pride, freedom to just be. Hmm. And that's who we are. We believe in all that. Dear oh me, did you see the <laughs> moment there when uh, the realisation dawned on Oprah that by giving Kamala this platform, she'd made a terrible mistake, that she was actually helping the Trump <laughs> camp? Yeah, that was, a, that was a good moment. Now, that realisation of just how hopeless this candidate is was also evident with the National Association of Black Journalists. You remember the vicious way they treated Donald Trump a few weeks ago when he attended the conference? You've attacked black journalists, calling them a loser, saying the questions that they ask are, quote, stupid and racist. You've had dinner with a white supremacist at your Mar-a-Lago resort. So my question, sir, now that you are asking black supporters to vote for you, why should black voters trust you after you have used language like that? Well, first of all, I don't think I've ever been asked a question so in, in such a horrible manner, a first question. <laughs> you don't even say, hello, how are you? Are you with ABC? Because I think they're a fake news network, a terrible network. 
I still cannot believe he had the crowd on his side at that conference. I did not see that one coming. But compare how that same association questioned Kamala a few days ago. I'd like to ask you more about the opportunity economy. Um, housing is part of it, as well as expanding the earned income tax credit, financial support, as you mentioned. Yes, with Kamala, it was a lovey, not hostile, not combative, not spewing lies and slurs. But the vice president struggled anyway. Just look at the journalist's reaction when she left the stage. They knew. They knew. Now, there was at least one voter who was moved deeply by that Oprah Kamala interview. Oprah and Kamala had me crying. It's like the nostalgia of Oprah in the 90s after high school, but like with the hope of today with Kamala and, and there's a Swifty right behind him. I wonder if she ever seen the video of Oprah and Trump in the, when was it, the early, late 90s, early 2000s? I wonder if that would get her crying too. I love it so much. You know, they should have never closed the asylums. They should have opened a few more. <laughs> and this next... What really gets me is how the view, maybe 10, well, we're in 2024, maybe 20 years ago, Joy Behar was all hugged up on Trump and falling in love, gushing and gobbling and slobbering all over him. When I, he was... I think that was his first time actually throwing his hat in the ring for public office, but and how today they could just turn it back on him like he's the worst person in the world. But a few decades ago there was all googly goggly making lovey dubby eyes at him and People like that, man, you just can't trust. Just can't trust. But thankfully, Mike Tyson held strong for our man Trump. And he knows what a good guy he is. And he said he's not turning his back on him. And I would like to dare a lot of the liberals to try to do something crazy to Mike Tyson. and See how that works out for you. Seeing the video of him. On a plane when that guy kept antagonizing him, but let's continue on. Pastor, a female pastor, could do with time in a padded cell. Listen to her claim that if Jesus were around today, he'd be an abortion doula. If Jesus were here today, he would be a clinic escort, distracting women from the hatred of the protesters. Or an abortion doula holding women's hands and offering support and love as they end their pregnancies. If Jesus were giving his sermon today, he might also have said, blessed are those who end pregnancies, for they will be known for their loving kindness. I wonder. I don't think she read the part in the Bible. Wow. I don't know the scripture, chapter, or verse. I'm sorry, but um, I'm par <clears throat> paraphrasing, but it says to harm a young child or harm any child. I'm assuming that means babies in a womb as well. They'd be better off tying a rope around their neck, attached to a rock, and basically throwing it into the ocean. So, like I said, I was paraphrasing it, but if y'all know in the comments, let me know what it exactly stated. But um, I don't think Jesus would be too happy about abortions or actually helping out with abortions. I wonder whether this Jesus, she imagines, supports abortion right up to birth, as is available in a number of states in America. I guess we'll have to find out. Now, as always, there'll be plenty more Lefties content with my next guest. Check out this young man who reminds me a little of Alex Stein. Here he dresses up as Donald Trump and does God's work. That's uh, trolling anti-Israeli activists.
Introducing Zaxby's new chicken finger tacos. One with pico and creamy chipotle ranch. Family side will live forever. When people are occupied, resistance is justified. Joining me now is host of Primetime with Alex Stein on Blaze Media. Well, I'm cut it up there. But uh, the main reason why this video got my attention was, like I said, I seen, well, I heard bits and pieces of uh, The View talking about um, Patrick Mahomes, Brittany Mahomes, is that her name? Yeah, Brittany Mahomes liking of a Trump post and then the video just automatically just jumps on her and tries to shame her and her decisions of post likings I guess. Oh people people no tough road ahead of us. Wasn't life a little bit easier when we we're all young and naive of what was going on in the world and we don't have all these cares and responsibilities, but I guess that's growing up. And I'm ended here, Down Home News TV. I'm Dre. Sorry for the lack of enthusiasm today. I'm pretty tired, past my bedtime. I gotta get up early, but uh, thank you for watching the video. And I will see y'all on the next one.